Hello and welcome to the Josh Astrop podcast, episode number 122. Thank you for downloading the podcast. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that every Wednesday when we upload a new episode, it automatically downloads to your device. If you want to find the podcast, it's the same everywhere. Just look for the Josh Astrop podcast. I'll put the links to all the social media um, in the podcast show notes. Um, it's also available on Acast if you don't have um, Apple Podcasts. Also, the video version is available 24 hours uh, after the uh, audio-only version on iTunes, so that's the same every week. Like I say, you can find us on YouTube. Just look for the Josh Astrop Podcast. So this week's guest is uh, somebody I hadn't met, hadn't even spoken to, hadn't had any contact with whatsoever before... Um, we met to do the podcast, which is always always an interesting dynamic. I quite like that because you're you're starting with a clean, fresh slate. There's no history. There's nothing that I know um, about the guest that I won't ask that somebody listening who doesn't know anything about the guest doesn't know. So um, that's good. I'm sort of discovering things about the guest and and what they're doing with their life uh, as we go. So I think that um, is an interesting dynamic. Um, but this week's guest, she has a very successful uh, YouTube channel, and it's it's fascinating in in several ways. Um, and she's, I think, she's at a pivotal moment at, uh, um, uh, currently with the direction of the channel. So that is also interesting to to understand and see how that evolves. Um, but I won't say too much because we discussed quite a lot in the episode. So I think it's best that we just get on with it. Uh, we do talk to somebody off camera a few times if you're listening on the uh, or watching it on YouTube. Um, but I've done some um, audio wizardry so that you can hear the person despite them not having a microphone I um, suppose so their voice might sound a little different but but that is why um, and that was sorry uh, that was Charles Haynes which was last week's guest um, he is uh, working with uh, Christiane at the moment so let's get into it this is the Josh Astrop podcast episode number 122 with Christiane Risman. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be, especially in your studio, which is so fancy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's all right, man. It's um, it's coming handy. When I first got the place, turned it into a rehearsal studio, this was going to be my office. Yeah. Which I quickly realised was way too unnecessary and a bit extravagant. Uh, why me. not? You should be as extra as your well, yeah. heart wishes, you know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so a long time, it was empty. In fact, for years, it was just an empty space. As in just this upstairs bit? Or the just south- this upstairs bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. So um, and it's then great event- to be able to use it now. Yeah, no, for, for sure. something nice. No, it looks something proper fun. like Casey Neistat creative. Like, oh, okay. That's <laughs> what I feel like I've that's walked into here. And it's just very, these, uh, are, these are all things uh, from previous guests, so... People that have been on before. Oh my god! Do so you have, have to send something? send something, and I'll and I'll put it up. I'm like, there. what can I leave you that I've got? On me? Like, <laughs> you don't have to have it now. It's fine. It's fine. Like... <laughs> get your car keys. Just put them on the side there. <laughs> just leave it's them fine. here for you. Yeah. No, I've got to get home today. Yes. Um. Where Where do you live? Where did you come from? Woking. Okay. So it was, yeah, an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, not not too bad at all. Actually, didn't get stuck in traffic or anything Excellent. like that. Excellent. Yeah. It's nice coming to Northampton though. It's very country. Like you can feel the difference. Between, yeah. Like you know, here and where I'm from. Yeah, it's, it's in so between. fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is surrounded by really nice villages and things, which is which is great. Yeah. So as much as like in the town centre or in the um, housing estates and stuff, it can get a little bit like there's no grass and there's no trees and yeah, it's just yeah. houses and cars. Yeah. Um, the, the really nice countryside is right, you know, it's just there. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Especially like, yeah, when you're driving on the motorway and it is just... <clears throat> It's just green for ages. Yeah. It's lovely. No, it is nice. It's, it's, I feel like I've like just come to another country when I come <laughs> when I come up and this is up north for me. Yeah, so. this is what it looks like, yeah. So you've not been to Northampton before? I've been here <laughs> once um, when I was visiting Charles. Yeah. Um, but I haven't actually been into the town centre at all. Okay. 
Yeah. And you, yeah, you just went for lunch. Yeah, we did. At the crepery. At called... the crepery. Cafe, Cafe, Cafe crepery. It was lovely. Yeah. I had a chili con carne and cheese crepe. And I, I very rarely have savoury crepes. Okay. I feel like that's not, it's yeah, not yeah. really a usual not thing on my menu. Banana and Nutella or something. No. <laughs> well, well, maybe that a bit more often. Yeah. But like, I don't know, savoury crepes isn't really something I'd think to have at home. Mm. But it was really, really delicious. Oh, cool. I'm thinking maybe I should have it more often. Yes. Well, it's been a successful trip already then. Yeah. You've oh, absolutely. You've learned that. Just lunch, yeah. you know. <laughs> what did you make of the town centre in general? Well, I thought it was really nice, but Charles did say... This is the really nice bit. Okay. As far as I'm yeah. like, okay. I'd agree. This is, maybe this is the <clears> nicest <throat> it gets. But from what I saw, it was lovely. We met yeah. a very lovely man on the way home who was Charles's hairdresser. And we think he was a bit drunk. Okay. I'm interested to, to hear what, what people think of Northampton first impressions because I suppose like m- many towns... It's had good times and bad times and right. places when there's been, you know, really good popular shops and restaurants and clubs or whatever, and then not so much. So I think it's in an interesting stage at the moment where businesses like um, Yellow Bourbon, who do the coffee that mm. I'm drinking, um, and um, Hatbox, who Jason, who I've just mentioned, and um, well, there's lots, you know, hairdressers, coffee, uh, uh, bottle shops, all sorts of things, but independent local business people. Yeah. Which I think is brilliant. Yeah. And we don't have... A- very much of that in Woking where I'm from it's mainly no. just like everything just seems like it's a chain yeah and so yeah it's, it's really nice coming somewhere where it's a lot of independence yeah but yeah no what I've seen from Northampton so far I've really liked good good yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear that I have I have faith in in the in the town a lot of people don't Aww. but they're boring so uh, they're there you go. so boring yeah um, well, you're also not too far from London which is yeah. great especially with the train station I mean you probably drove past it on the way here it's mm. it's so I'll tell you what I was impressed with. Two hours free parking in that multi-storey car park. Okay, yeah. We don't get that where I'm that from. That is good. No, <laughs> that is a good move by, by the council, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? It really does make a difference. I mean, maybe yeah. it shows how, how boring we are. But yeah. like when you're trying to park and you haven't got the change, like, oh, how much is it? It's like Little uh, things like yeah, that. You just, just really it, appreciate. Yeah, simple <laughs> things. And you'd know, well, I mean, you'd know that with travelling. Little yeah. things like that yeah. are significant. Oh, it just makes when you don't have difference. time to prepare yeah. and you don't know what is going to be there when you when you when you arrive. Yeah, I feel like I've just been so many places where you just get there and you think it's going to be easy to park or whatever, and it's like eight pounds for an hour, and you're like, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> like, oh, for God's sake, yeah, it's too much. It's just too much. It's not. Yeah, it stops people. Anyway, we're getting we're going to get into like councils, what they should be doing with their towns and things, <laughs> and that really is boring. Um, <laughs> No, but thank you for coming down. I really appreciate it. Um, your your YouTube channel is fantastic. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, um, it's nice to see all, all the things that you're doing. And I particularly like it, um, and I heard you say, um, I think it was when you were going to play golf. And oh, you, you said, watched the most recent yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. And um, you said about trousers, and I haven't worn these trousers since an office job. Yeah. And I thought, that's brilliant, because... A bad office job is what made me do this. Oh, really? You know, I hated it and it was yeah. boring and I, and I thought I can't, I've got to do something that means I don't have to do this sort of job again because yeah. it doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, so so it, is that anything to do with why you're doing it? Um, not really. So I, I was just saying to Charles today, like YouTube's always been my passion project kind of thing. And yeah. I always wanted to be a YouTuber when I was like a teenager and I, I'd watch loads of YouTube and I was interested in TV presenting, but yeah. didn't know how to get into that. And that just kind of seemed very unattainable. Okay. But YouTube seemed very attainable. Like, you know, all you need is a camera and you can film whatever you want. You yeah. can put out whatever you want. You don't need any other money other than that essentially yeah. Yeah. or any other experience you can do whatever you want um but at the time so when I was like 14 15 watching lots of other YouTubers I didn't know what I wanted to make videos about yeah. um like I made lots of silly ones with my friends but obviously that it wasn't anything in particular but then when I went backpacking with my friends in 2013 mm. I was like okay I can make travel videos and this actually has a purpose yeah and so ever since then I've just been making travel videos and also backpacking tips and advice videos which were actually the videos that ended up 
doing really well for me in terms of gaining a lot of subscribers yeah, and yeah. gaining um, just people being interested in my channel, um, which allowed, well, not allow me, but like it encouraged me and I just carried on <clears> doing <throat> yeah. more travel and making more videos. And that's kind of how I got into it. And the the boring office jobs I was just doing at the time to save money to go traveling. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. like I made the videos because I was doing that, but yeah, it was just a means of making money but yeah. I've been quite lucky to have a quite a natural progression over the past couple of years um where now the thing I do to make money is also video making but for other people not yeah, just yeah. for myself yeah. which I'm so pleased with because it's taken something that I really enjoy to make money from but yeah. I still see YouTube as my passion project really like I I just really enjoy making videos mm. and being creative with it I, I still struggle with my I guess direction of it and the kind of content that I want to create because I I don't think I can plan in the future for that kind of thing yeah it's just like what I'm feeling at the time and I, I might plan a video in advance yeah. but it's not like I can't say, oh, in five years time, I'm going to be making these kind of videos because I really don't know. No, it's no. just, yeah, whatever I'm feeling at the time. And that vlog that you watched, my yeah. most recent video, that was a really impromptu video because I hadn't put out a video in a couple of weeks and I was feeling a bit sad. I was like, oh, I haven't done it. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to film a day. I'm yeah. just going to film a day, see where it goes mm. and put it out. And I loved doing that. I, I loved the fact that I didn't really know where it was going to go and everything like that. And, and that was like kind of what reinforced in my mind yeah this is what you enjoy doing and yeah. this is just like what makes me happy yeah that's really that's really interesting there's a couple of things i wanted to talk about there is that one of them you saying the transition between doing the day job that you didn't well maybe not didn't like but you weren't mad about yeah you didn't want to do forever yeah uh into something that was interesting and exciting that you wanted to do yeah. but it, it couldn't generate enough money for you to just do that mm -hmm. it's like I think that's the case for a lot of people in a lot of things when they're starting their own business, whether it's a, whether it's a, being a plumber on the side while you're working in a bar or whatever. It's like you want to make that transition into the other thing that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Quite often, there's a, there's a grey area where you're just not going to have enough money for a bit. Yeah. while Because you can't do both full time. Yeah, but yeah. you have to, so you have to take that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. But to hear that it was, a, I'm sure it wasn't completely smooth, mm. but I'm, that to hear that it was a fairly not awkward and easy transition, that's mm. good. I mean, that just shows how, how well the channel did and, and how, yeah. how much your work was appreciated that you were able to do that. Well, I think the most important thing is just the fact that I always enjoyed making videos. And I think that that's always my biggest tip to anyone who like wants to make a YouTube channel and make it a business and everything like that because I never forced it to make money or anything like that and I yeah. still don't yeah. like it's cool if I do make money from yeah. it but I just think it's just so important to just enjoy what you're doing because then you can spend as much you can spend so much time on it mm. And you're still going to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. And you can do other things to make money. And even if it gets a bit tougher, at least you don't think, oh, this is a waste of time. Because mm. that's yeah. the worst. If you think you're putting all this time and effort into something which may not actually happen. Yeah. But if you're enjoying it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Then, then it doesn't yeah. matter. Because... The process is part of the enjoyment. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. That's, that's good. That's, yeah, I think quite often people can when they when, when when you find an interest or a passion and you start to do it if you then start to do it as a job or like a job yeah you can quickly not be fun anymore mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if but that's probably because you know our oh, people are doing it and they're like i've got to make this much money or i've got to do this many videos or i've got yeah. to whereas if you're doing it because you want to do it there's yeah. no limits and there's no targets and there's no goals and it yeah. is i mean i'm sure it's just an added bonus that it's doing well yeah if it, if, sure. if you had 10 subscribers after five years yeah you probably feel differently yeah um but i mean it's and i'd it's probably a make slightly different content because a lot of the content i make now it is, it's always content that i do want to make but a lot of it is driven by comments i've been receiving and what okay. i've heard that people want to see yeah and um but i guess if i still only had you know 10 subscribers I'd, I'd probably be making slightly different content because I wouldn't be getting any feedback. Yeah. Um, that, that would be very interesting. Not that I'll ever yeah. really know, but know like what, what, what content I would be making if I didn't have any uh, yeah. 
followers. I feel like it would probably be similar to the cut, the, the my most recent video, just okay. filming my day, yeah, yeah. putting it together in a really fun way. And because one of my favorite things as well about having a YouTube channel is having stuff to look back on, memories that yeah. um, I've made. And yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I, I think video is the best way to document stuff like better than better than photos yeah and, definitely and especially when you put music to it and you just really like it just really brings that feeling back yeah of how things were um and yeah i think it's just a great like memorabilia yeah i think it really is it's funny um last year october <clears throat> um i me and my friend went traveling about 13 years ago 14 years ago something like that um and he had a video camera with uh -huh. a video cassette in it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he took that around. Obviously, it was a small video. It wasn't full-size VHS. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we had that copied onto videos and he had a copy on. And now, obviously, I haven't had a video player for 10 years now. Yeah, yeah. So I've just never watched them again. Oh, no. Are you so, going to buy one? <laughs> well, I went through the process of burning it or getting it off the video onto okay. the computer. So I did that. and, yeah. and uh, But obviously, I haven't seen it for a long time. Oh. And it was so cool. Obviously, it looked, yeah. like, looked like two little kids running around. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was brilliant. And it was, you forget, you forget most of it, I mm -hmm. think, uh, especially after that long. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a really, it, is, it couldn't have been documented any better. Yeah. You know, video and particularly as when you're recording, like if you're recording a whole day or a long, you know, sequence of days, you're not, if you were trying to portray something that wasn't real, yeah. you can't keep it up forever. No. Nah. So inevitably, the re the truth is going to come out, and yeah. your natural personality is going to show itself. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, not not that everyone does that, but I mean, I think we're all susceptible to. Well, when you've taken a selfie, how many times have you taken more mm -hmm. than one photo? Mm -hmm. You know, we all do it. Every single time. If you want to edit, if you can. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> I think that was really nice to uh, <clears throat> see Just the raw. Yeah. It was really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it always yeah, is. <laughs> but what, what was I expecting? Um, yeah. You're never as as cool as you think you are. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not in retrospect. But then, I mean, that makes you feel better about yourself now. Be like, oh, I've really improved yeah. since then. <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully I've learned some stuff since yeah. then. Um, so, the, so you started the travel um, channel mm. on your first trip away. Uh, like outside I, family I, holiday. I guess, yes, yeah. I, I had the YouTube channel for, yeah, since I was like 13 or 14 and would make silly little videos, but we named it Backpacking Bananas, which yeah. is what it is today. Um, when I went in 2013 on this backpacking trip, first time me and two friends and we, we all together were the Backpacking Bananas. They're the two girls that were in the video. Yes, this, yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, yeah, in the golfing one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they oh, were. Brilliant. That's yeah, great. so we're all still really good oh, friends. that's nice, yeah. Um, but, um, and we all made the videos together and that that yeah that was when it was kind of born on that first trip but then because I really liked the idea of having this YouTube channel mm. um, after we got back from a trip and I said I wanted to make these backpacking tips and tricks videos and just kind of keep it going they were happy for me to do that but weren't fussed about like you know remaining involved um, but you know we're all still good friends and they'll they're still happy to be in videos when, uh, whenever we're hanging out and I'm, I'm making stuff, which is really, yeah. really cool. It's yeah, really yeah. nice. No, that is that that is good actually. When you when you you mentioned it, I think briefly in the video that uh, you went uh, originally went travelling with those guys, and I thought, well, that's sort of a slot full circle, isn't it, from the beginning? I mean, yeah. obviously you haven't stopped the channel, obviously. Yeah. Um, but that's interesting to hear that so far, you know, from from looking at what the channel is now and yeah. all the content that you've created and yeah. and all the people you've met and connections you've made from then, you know, from when you were first away. Yeah. I mean, that that must be quite a Almost like a bookend, but without it finishing, obviously. Yeah, kind of. And and we went to Copenhagen at the end of last year, the three of us okay, yeah, as yeah. well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like a constant, um, yeah, just keeping them involved. Yeah. But with no obligation. Yeah, yeah, involved, yeah. There's no commitment, but um, no, it just, it just works out really well. That's cool. That's really nice. Um, you know what? One, one other thing I realised on the, on the video I watched of when I went away um, is that there's people that popped up and I was like, Oh well, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Was, but then I'd completely <laughs> forgotten them. Yeah, like as if they'd never, they'd yeah. never um, existed. And then yeah. I just remembered all this stuff, and I thought, how could I forget? Yeah. But where did you go? It's it's, it's life, isn't it? Um, we went to um, California, Fiji, New Zealand, Australia, and South Africa. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and um, 
Yeah. For, for, Did you have like separate little videos for each country or was it just one yeah. just kind of all well I mean it one. was all on a, a, a handful of tapes yeah. we didn't take many tapes with yeah. us and it didn't help that at one point I on the, one of the very few occasions that I was filming I put the lens back on the camera and put it in the bag and it was still recording oh and no then, and I, we didn't know because we don't go back and review the tapes oh. so we just thought oh well we've used up three hours of that tape oh no <laughs> So back in the day, it was terrible. You could just hear we were we had hired a convertible and we were driving down Highway One in California. Oh, so you was, could hear you. So you could hear the radio, the car radio. Oh, but you weren't it was talking. Great. No. That would have been brilliant um, if you were actually like talking, yeah, having conversations. That's what I thought. Listening back to that, what would we have been saying? Yeah, yeah, probably nonsense. Um, but no, you you, <laughs> you you forget about these things, you know. And the more interesting experiences you have, I think, in a way, the more you forget stuff as mm. well because. I mean, obviously there's not a finite space in your mind, but, yeah. you know, if you're doing new and interesting things and meeting new people, yeah. you will forget stuff and you're thinking about the next thing. Yeah. So it's nice to have that review. Yeah. You do for forget sure. these experiences. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Yeah. So um, you started making the videos from that first trip. How were you doing it on that? I mean, 2013, you probably yeah. had a camera with an SD card in it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like an old, what, really old man here. What camera did we have? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were able to like, what did you, how did you record and edit? Did you do it all in th and edit when you come back or did you do I it as you I had a go? laptop with me. Oh, okay, cool. I was the only yeah. one of us who had my, I actually bought it specifically so I could ah. be editing as we went along. It was just a little crappy little Windows and yeah. I was using Windows Movie Maker, I think. Um, but that was fine. Does you know, the job, yeah. It worked. Like yeah. I was, the editing wasn't fancy. Literally just putting together videos, putting some music to it, just cutting it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it worked. Um, what cameras were we using? I think my friend had a slightly fancier Nikon, okay. um, but it wasn't that fancy. Yeah, and then yeah. I had just like a compact camera which recorded video. And I think we also did videos on a uh, phone as well. Yeah. Because um, yeah, we, we all had smartphones at the time. Actually, I think I had a Blackberry at the time. Yeah. Oh, Blackberry. Yeah, I think I had a Blackberry. Business phone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, it was weird. When I was in college, everyone had a Blackberry. Even oh, really? It was, yeah, it was a business phone, but it was yeah. like the trend. Uh, yeah. That didn't happen over here. No. Oh. In Northampton. Or maybe, <laughs> no. maybe not in my school and my college. No. Oh, yeah. We all but then I was phone. early. I mean, I was 16 when I got my first phone. Yeah. And it was like You were new. 16? Yeah. So all through secondary I mean, secondary they'd just school. come out. <laughs> sort of. You didn't even have like a Nokia 3310 or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. the basic But I had is. a couple of phones before that. Oh, before, okay. before they came out. Because they weren't out when I was 16. Oh my God. Yeah. Weren't they? No. Surely, surely. I'm 33. So when did phones come out? Bef I 20 years ago? I, I, uh, you're making me feel very Do young, you know, but Charles? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm almost the same age as you, Josh. So yeah, but I can't remember. Can you? Can you remember? I had a thirty-three ten. Uh, was that your first phone? When I was before sixteen, I think. Oh, yeah. See. All around then, so you could. Offer you were me. deprived. <laughs> you were deprived just of just playing Snake from the age of twelve. Poor boy from a poor family. <laughs> um, I got it on holiday, actually, in a in a weird shop. Yeah, pay as you go, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so when I went away, two thousand and four, maybe there wasn't camera phones. No, I don't think. Well, I think so. I don't think camera phones came out until probably twenty two thousand and six or seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just that will have just changed everything. Mm. Particularly when when it comes it to makes travel, so much more convenient. You know, cameras. I had a di I took a digital camera that didn't that did video. Mm. Yeah, terrible, terrible video. Yeah, blurry. You couldn't make it out. Um, but there was no. That was the smallest thing you could get that would take a picture. So do you know what? I don't think. Well, especially like back then, I don't think the quality mattered. Like it's about the content, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, that, that is the most fundamental important thing, especially when you're just making like a memorabilia video. Yeah, I'm not making just, a movie. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And yeah. it's not like for the masses to to view it. And when me and my friends were making videos, we didn't think this is for thousands of people to see. And obviously we would talk about, oh, how hilarious if these went viral and so many yeah, people yeah, saw yeah. them. But we never 
like created them with that intention yeah. and you know try to make loads of people watch it and and they didn't you know those yeah. videos it was literally just our yeah. friends and family and you can't yeah. oh well you you'd know more than me but you can't make people watch anything no no, you can't. <laughs> you can set it up to Yeah, there are things that you best, can try but, and do, yeah. but there's no guarantees. But I do think that the better the content is as opposed to the quality of the, the video or whatever is yeah. the most important thing. So have you found, uh, have you struck the balance between um, being creative and doing what you want to do, filming what you want to do and editing the way you want, mm. but also taking on suggestions and comments from people that are watching your video. I mean, how have you found that? Because sometimes they're opposing opinions, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. No, g generally, absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, because I don't tend to get much feedback to do with the actual creativity with my videos other than, oh, the music was too loud in this. Right. Or Technical sort of. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. But uh, generally, the feedback I get is, oh, can you talk about this? Right. Or, and it'll just be people aren't asking questions yeah. as opposed to, you did this wrong, which yeah. is nice because yeah, yeah. it means that I can still be creative. Though I do think sometimes I'm like, oh, it would be nice to get a bit more creative feedback from uh, viewers yeah, and yeah. subscribers because it might help me or just consider new options and new uh, ways of creating in my head. Yeah. But I guess for the fact that I don't get much feedback on that is maybe a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, yeah, maybe it is. You do wonder that, don't you? I mean, you constantly, I don't know about you, but I constantly question what I'm doing, why yeah. I'm doing it. Is this the right thing? Yeah. Or I don't know what to do. Well, when it's just you in your head, yeah. then it's hard because you've, yeah, you've got no one else kind of saying, yes, that's right or that's wrong. So, and if you're about to be putting it out, to the masses yeah yeah you don't know how it's gonna go because it's yeah. only you've only consulted it with yourself in your head yeah no i do struggle with that yeah I th uh, is that harder because you have more people following you than than when it when you had fear i i i guess so yes yeah yeah because yeah when i didn't have any subscribers it, it really didn't, it didn't matter, matter okay, because yeah. i did i didn't know who was gonna watch it no no one was gonna watch it yeah, yeah. um but yeah now i do think about the people who are watching my videos yeah. and will they enjoy this? Um, I like to think that it's a good thing though because now when I'm reviewing my own video before putting it out and before kind of finalizing it, I'm thinking, okay, at what point is this getting boring? Or what what will people think of this? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess just having that way of thinking is probably good. Yeah. Um, for structuring not structuring the video but just making the final changes yeah i don't know if i'm making sense yeah no you are no you are no totally yeah that is it I, I'm, I'm interested to find out yeah how that i mean i suppose it's how success dictates mm. the thing that made you successful mm. because inevitably it will change regardless of whatever what, whoever's listening to it mm -hmm. whoever's watching it if nobody listened to it it would still change because you'd want to do something different yeah. or you've learned how to edit in a way that you didn't know before whatever it is yeah. um, but then obviously there are a lot of other factors and then some videos do better than others and you know i would imagine you're trying to work out why mm. and then trying to do that yeah, again sure. or apply that whatever that secret sauce whatever that is that worked to the latest video well do you know what the video of mine which has the most views is a review i did of the life straw which is like a filtering straw it's had over a million views oh yes the and water, yeah, i yeah. drink my own piss yeah. at the end of the video yeah i'm not going to be doing that in no video. no <laughs> it did it, i'm sh it doesn't it filters out the bacteria doesn't it yeah the harmful bacteria yeah not all the bacteria, nine, yeah. Nine, nine, nine percent of so all I'm water sure bacteria apparently. i imagine it still tastes like warm urine yeah i i haven't even tried my life straw since because no. I, i'm worried that yeah the particles of that are probably still within the straw but yeah it's not bad for you it's perfectly fine so it? i'm like how and that that video like other than the fact that I drank my own piss, like I didn't put too much effort into it because yeah. it was just like, it was just a fun little video. So how has that got so many views? And then I've got other videos which I've put so much like research and effort, yep. planning, took me so much time to edit. And then that's only got like a couple thousand views. Yeah. So that's like sometimes a bit difficult because mm. you're just like, 
oh yeah what's the what what, what do yeah. i make what 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 should i be making and uh um yeah yeah well and, and it's just a constant debate of like am i making this because i want to make it or am i making this because i think it's going to do well yeah um and i try to have a balance i yeah. guess that's it i think i think that's it i think like with music as well you know you want to you want to make music and you want to express yourself and you want to you know, say whatever you want to say or play whatever you want to play. However, you probably got an idea of what is more popular and what is not as popular. Mm -hmm. So you'd be a fool to consciously choose something that's not popular. Mm -hmm. But then are you selling out? Yeah. Are you making something purely for financial gain or whatever? Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe there's nothing wrong with that as well, you know? I mean, well, yeah. that, that's fine. Lots of people make things to make money. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, but you, but it feels funny, yeah. I think, doesn't it? It yeah. feels not quite right. No, for um, sure. I think that's probably the yeah. big one of the biggest predicament of a lot of YouTubers. Yeah. Either, or at least the ones who set out with the intentions of creating the content that they want to create. Yeah. And then, yeah, if they're... they're the the content that they like the most isn't performing as well. Yeah, it can make you a bit like, oh, like, yeah. you know, what do I what do I carry on doing? Yeah, that's it. It, it. it will be difficult to know where to go from there. But I think um I think I spoke about it with um Charles last week about creating content and and what is so great about YouTube is that people have an area of expertise or just an area of interest mm. and then they can make a video, put it out and share it with other people. Um now they might not be a professional, you know, as such, but they just have something, something that's 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 interesting, and they have experience in, and they're able to convey that message across. Mm -hmm. And why isn't that worth as much as buying and selling a car or or a computer or making something? Yeah. You know, what that has just I get more I get more pleasure from watching videos on YouTube than I do from my phone mm. you know it's you know as a device sort of thing but that's yeah. worth i don't know 600 quid if you buy them yeah but but you know so, so why can't why shouldn't people get made yeah you know, paid money for, for making videos on youtube i mean it is it is a product mm -hmm. it does provide something for somebody and it, yeah. and you know a huge company like youtube with all their services they're not free Mm -hmm. They're paying to have that go in, so mm -hmm. they've got to make money as mm -hmm. well, you know. So it's all, it's all part of the, it's all part of the system. I think it's, mm -hmm. but it's easy to feel guilty for charging for art, really, or, yeah. or passion. Yeah. But you shouldn't because it is good. No. Yeah. <laughs> and and if 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 YouTube changed their model, or if their model when they first came out was right, it's it's five pence a view. Mm -hmm. That I'm sure that would have been successful. Mm. Maybe not as successful, I don't know. But there's no ads, but you pay five pence or t 1p or whatever it is. Mm. You know, it's probably more than, than ads make per, you know, um, when they appear on your video. Mm. But it's a direct from, from consumer to creator. Yeah. I think, I think that'll work because the value is there. It, it has, it has, Do you think people worth. would pay to watch YouTube? Videos? I think so. I would. The ones that I watch, I really want to watch it. I feel like I would now, mm. but... If YouTube was a new thing to me, I'd like, you know, had not used it before and they yeah. were like, you pay to use it, I'd be reluctant. Yeah. I'd want to know that it was quality. Yeah. But before. now that you know that you but now, do, yeah, but this it's is like, thing. okay, yeah, this is yeah. something I would pay for. Yeah. But, um, well, that's it. Perhaps if, yeah, that's interesting. So what if they said, this ad, uh, this video is ad free? Mm. No, there's no product placement, no ads, no nothing, no sponsorship. But it's going to cost you 49p to watch it. Mm. So I, th I think that would be an interesting experiment. Mm. Well, they've got YouTube Red now, don't yes, they? Yes, yeah, yeah. Which I think is probably essentially that. Well, I've never so I, I, used I, it or watched it. No, I don't neither know. have I. I, okay. I don't pay for it. Well, maybe that shows you how successful that is then. Yeah. <laughs> and but another reason why I don't want to is because the shows that seem to be on there from the content creators that I watch Liza Koshy for example I don't know if you know no, her no. she's a big US uh, comedy YouTuber and um, she's got a YouTube Red series um, but it seems just from the trailers I've seen and everything it seems very kind of scripted planned almost like a TV show yeah and I, that is not what I like about YouTube. I like yeah. 
just people's vlogs yeah. and their everyday life. Like normally the most mundane stuff yeah. is what I really, really enjoy. Unless it's like a tips video or something, which yeah. is something useful. But like generally yeah, yeah. just people being themselves is what I really like. And so, yeah, YouTube Red, which seems like a lot more money's put into it yeah. to create yeah, yeah, yeah. it. But, and that's why you have to pay to watch it. I don't know, but that just doesn't appeal to me as much. Yeah, no, I can understand that. That's what I like. There's a lot of similarities between YouTube and, and podcasting, I think, uh, or what YouTube has enabled video creators to, to do. Because it's free content and anyone can produce it. Mm. It doesn't need to be filtered or checked or, or anything. Yeah. Um, it's direct, which is great because you get real conversations and real insight. Yeah. And which is what you get from a vlog and not an edited, scripted show or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it, it, even if it's not just, you know, a daily, a day in the life of sort of thing, but tr travel videos or whatever, if you're just recording as you go, mm -hmm. rather than setting up and making a video, mm. um, you know, if you're just documenting, mm -hmm. then that is, in my opinion, way more fascinating. Yeah. It's real, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And yeah, you just, you can relate more to the people yeah. and their real lives which, yeah, to me is so much more entertaining yeah. as well. Because I'm like, this is their real emotions. These are their real reactions. This is this is their lifestyle. Yeah. And you compare yourself to that. Whereas if it's, if it's scripted, if it's planned, you can't quite compare yeah. yourself to that because you know it's not quite real. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And, and, and Instagram, obviously, you know, hugely popular and, and successful. But that's one... You know, it's, it's for photo. I mean, obviously, you know, there's video as well, but it's photo and that's, you know, the 15th take of that photo that they've yeah. uploaded <laughs> and edited. It's yeah. like, that is, and there's some great stuff on there and I use it and it's, and it's wonderful, but it is not as interesting to me as, mm. as you know, real, you know, video documenting or, or, yeah. or just long conversations. I use Instagram mostly for inspiration and right. like, especially with travel and stuff, just like, finding out new places, new beautiful places and being like, wow. And, and yeah, just getting inspired and motivated by people. Yeah. But it's, I yeah, I know it's not necessarily real life a mm. lot of the time. Um, Looks good though. It does look good. Instagram's <laughs> very pretty. Um, you said inspired and motivated there and um, Liza Koshy, was it? You yeah. Said? Um, so she's somebody that you follow and you, 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 are inspired yeah, she's by. actually she's not my favorite, but um, she is incredibly successful and mm. she is hilarious and very original as well, okay. which I think I really, really respect. Yeah, there's no one else on YouTube that I've seen who's like doing what she does, at least not before her. Yeah, like, yeah she's yeah. inspired a lot of other people. Yeah, but just the content she comes out with is just really original, and I really, really respect that in a creator. Yeah, um, my other favorite also a u.s actually is a girl called monica church and she had a beauty channel uh, which had like a million subscribers um and i didn't follow that but she re more recently or in the past couple of years made a vlog channel um and it was kind of her passion project and she she's very good at video making and making these vlogs and was just so real mm -hmm. um in them and she would just be having the most mundane day, but the way she presented it on camera is unlike any other female vlogger I've seen on YouTube. And the fact that it was so original, like I hadn't seen, it, it didn't feel like she was trying to be anyone else. Yeah. I just had so much respect for that. And she really kind of inspired me a lot with my videos actually. Does that make me not original? Because I'm like, yeah, no, that's you know, interesting. Taking inspiration from her. As soon as you said she was, she's so original, and 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 that's what you find is It's It's like, well, that's great because she's doing some uh, being original. Is doing something that nobody's done before. Yeah, and therefore it might not work. Mm. There's no blueprint. There's no previous information to go on. Yeah. So that takes a certain amount of guts to to, to do it. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, obviously that's going to inspire it's you. It's an immediately more attractive mm. because um, even if it doesn't quite work, you still respect them because it's not it's nothing that you've seen before. Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, you're seeing this creativity that's original. Yeah. Yeah. No, I and I guess it, I try to let it inspire me in the way of right. I need to be original and mm. just do my own thing and care a little bit less yeah. about what I think I should be doing 
and just be myself. Yeah. So yeah, I like to think that it inspires me in that way. Yeah. That's it. I think, I mean, it's been said before and I can't remember who said it now, but nothing, nothing is original. You know, we're all inspired mm. subconsciously quite, quite a lot of the time, you know, mm. it's what, what made you do anything, you know, what made me start a business? What made me, what drew me to, to turntablism and, and DJ? And it's like, well, I saw somebody yeah. doing it and I thought that's incredible. How do you yeah. do that? And I wanted to do it. It's mm -hmm. like, well, there you go. So I'm, that's an inspiration. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even my idea mm -hmm. to start doing it, let alone, yeah. you know, continue going. But yeah. I think, I mean, you're inspired by, I don't know about you, I'm inspired by everything, not uh -huh. necessarily just, you know, yeah. if I'm doing, I'm not just inspired by podcasters about podcasts and it's other things you know you take you, elements of yeah it and then you bump into somebody interested in the street and I think oh yeah I want to talk to somebody who does that as well yeah. that'd be really fascinating you know so I think you might feel like you're copying yeah or you're borrowing yeah. but you're not it's all part of yeah. the because I guess you're taking things from lots of different people yeah I think so and uh that yeah letting it affect different things that you're doing yeah, yeah trying to find the right combination yeah. And I think that's it. That's what, you know, quite often with the, the thing I can relate to, what we were talking about earlier, um, some videos working better than others and not quite understanding why. Mm -hmm. um, I've put on a, a load of gigs and some of them went really well, some of them sold out and some of them didn't. And I remember one time I did one and I sold, I don't know, 50 tickets mm -hmm. and I thought, right, we're going to need more people next, next time. Mm -hmm. So... I spent twice as much on advertising mm. and I got half as many people. Oh, really? And I just thought, what is going on? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. How, what is this about? Um, yeah. There's other factors involved, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so quite often you can feel like, even when you are taking a creative chance, trying to be original, mm -hmm. that is a leap of faith to, yeah, a, to an extent. Yeah, it's always a chance. But then even if you're trying to recreate a, a video that you know was successful there's still no guarantees that mm -hmm. it's going to work the same way. Mm -hmm. You don't know what else is going on at the time. Yeah. What are the videos and what's, what's in the, yeah. you know, in the zeitgeist or, or, or what, you know, what's popular at the moment. It's, it can sometimes feel like it's just one big grey area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what keeps us on our toes. Yeah. Like if there was just one formula, this is how you're successful. This is how to make a good video. Everyone would be doing the same thing, wouldn't they? Yeah. And so. Um, and, if, and if you enjoy the process. Yeah then it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's great. And that's why I, it's so important. Yeah, that is so great to hear somebody say that. <laughs> like, because I, that, I think that is the goal. I think, every, you know, whatever, you're, whatever you want to do in life, whether you want to make a million pounds or sell a million records or have a million subscribers, quite often people have those, those goals and getting there is hard and confusing at times and stressful not enough people enjoy the process, I don't yeah. think. Myself included, I think. Quite often yeah. I can fall into the trap of, um, oh, this is stressful or this is taking too long or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. It's because I'm used to it now. If, mm. I'd, if, if ten, years, 10 years ago I said to, my, to myself, um, oh, you'll have a podcast and you'll be doing that. And yeah. I'll be like, oh, that's really yeah, cool. That's, really that's cool. great. I love that. That's cool. <laughs> but now I'm like, oh, I've got another one to do. Oh, you know, it's, yeah, uh, but I'm yeah. just, you get used to that thing. Yeah, I think you it's, do. you should try and maybe think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. But yeah. that's what you've taught me oh. today. <laughs> this has been beneficial. Yeah, no, it's just really nice to, <laughs> to talk about it as well, because obviously I've got these thoughts in my head, but it's taking you to mm. kind of ask me questions and whatever to, yeah. to, really think about what I think about yeah no, that, that's so that's so true it, it, uh, that's what I get from this is uh, I imagine it's like therapy yeah it it's, kind of is. It is yeah <laughs> long conversations and I don't know about you but I don't have long conversations anymore yeah I do on here yeah, yeah. but with people in my life in general I feel when was the like last I'm... time you sat down with somebody for an hour and didn't look at your phone yeah. and just spoke to them. Yeah. It's like, it just doesn't happen anymore. No. I feel like I'm more motivated about my own stuff. <laughs> just like talking to oh, you. Good. I'm like convincing myself, yeah, yeah, I yeah, am yeah. original. Yeah, I will take inspiration. You are. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It's cool, I think. But we, we get carried away with day-to-day -day stuff, working through, oh, what's today? What have I got to fit in? And we forget about what we're doing in general. Yeah. And it's cool stuff quite often, you know, yeah. and, and if it's not, we can change that. But if you don't think about the whole, the bigger picture and the direction and where you're going, then you'll find yourself 10 years down the line thinking, shit, yeah. I didn't stop and think about what I was yeah. doing. I just did day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. I think it's important to, to, to do that. Um, 
Yeah, I think we're we're just about out of time now, unfortunately. Yeah. No, um, well, I agree. That's a good uh, ending, uh, ending little yeah. statement. No, but thank you for coming down. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Your channel's great. Keep doing it. Thanks. It's um, yeah, no, it's really cool. Thank you very much. So there it was, the Josh Astrop podcast, episode number 120, 122 with Christian Risman. Uh, what a fascinating person. Really enjoyed talking to, to Christian. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting to hear people's, particularly creative people's take on how they are juggling the two topics of being creative, doing what you want to do through inspiration that strikes you, and doing something that, uh, creating something that other people will want to watch. That is, I think that's a constant juggling act. And I don't think you ever get to a point where you stop, where you catch all the balls that you're juggling and everything's good. I think it's constantly going. You're trying this, you're trying that. You're going, oh, that's a little bit too, that's a little bit too much sort of I'm trying to get views or or um, rather than staying true to the art. Or... That that is too true to the art. That's too much. That's too much. What I want to do, and not and, and nobody wants to watch it. So that's a constant battle. I mean, whether you're making records or making videos on YouTube, it's the same creative struggle, I think. Um, but she's obviously enjoying that as part of the process, which is fascinating to to hear and great to hear. It's it's cool to to find somebody that has found that balance and is working out, but is enjoying the process rather than having a struggle to f try and find it. Um, I'll put all the links to the um, travel backpacking uh, page, uh, YouTube page, in the podcast show notes um, and, and all of the um, social media links. So, so check out the podcast show notes and you can find out all that information. I think that's it. If you want to find the podcast on any platform, whether that's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, Acast, and any other podcast provider, just look for... The Josh Astrop podcast, nice and simple. Yeah, I think that's it. We'll keep it tight this week. Um, I've been Josh Astrop. This has been the Josh Astrop podcast, episode number 122 with Christian Risman. We will see you next Wednesday. <laughs>